Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is Rhea, your study buddy for hematology. And today we are going to start talking about aplastic anemia. So what's aplastic anemia? It's characterized by bone marrow failure, okay? So there's cellular depletion and fatty replacement of the bone marrow leading to pancytopenia. So in pancytopenia, all of your three lines, you know, WBCs, white blood cells, are RBCs, red blood cells, and platelets are all depleted. They're not being made. So your bone marrow is empty. So there's two divisions of aplastic anemia. There's acquired and congenital. So let's talk about acquired aplastic anemia first. So for acquired aplastic anemia, 40 to 70% of it is actually idiopathic. Or primary so primary aplastic anemia is idiopathic we don't know what caused it it just happens okay and that's pretty bad <laughs> and there's secondary um, secondary acquired aplastic anemia which is caused by chemical agents such as benzene trinitrotoluene arsenic insecticides and weed killers so if you have to work with these things please wear a mask or protect yourself. So benzene ring is the common uh, chemical structure within these compounds and it's very volatile. So people could just inhale this and have it absorbed in the body pretty readily. The problem with benzene is that it acts to inhibit DNA and RNA synthesis. And so by stopping replication and differentiation, you get an empty marrow because they're being stopped they're not they're not able to continue their cell division and so that's why you have aplastic anemia so other drugs that can cause aplastic anemia is chloramphenicol which is an antibiotic and phenylbutazone which is an anti-inflammatory so these drugs trigger your body to produce antibodies that can cross-react with your bone marrow cells. And so these antibodies attack your own bone marrow cells and, you know, stop them from producing. Oftentimes, it is fully reversible the moment you take off the person from the medication. Another reason for secondary acquired aplastic anemia is ionizing radiation. So in ionizing radiation, this disrupts the chemical bonds in rapidly proliferating cells. So it disrupts that and it can lead to anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. So in high doses of radiation, 300 to 500 rods, um, this lead to complete loss of hematopoietic cells and it's irreversible and lethal. So it can kill you. So Take it easy with radiation. Don't want to mess with that. And so there's also infections that can cause aplastic anemia um, with hepatitis, Epstein-Barr virus, and cytomegalovirus can also cause aplastic anemia. Lastly, there's myelodysplastic syndromes such as in leukemia, solid tumors, and PNH, which is the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, which I will talk about eventually in one of these videos in the future. So for acquired aplastic anemia, it actually covers 95% of aplastic anemias. Okay, congenital aplastic anemia is very rare. And so let's move on to congenital aplastic anemia, which is the Fanconi's anemia. So in Fanconi's anemia, it's actually a disease that's very rare, okay? It's rare. Let's start with that. And patients that get this have a wide spectrum of abnormalities. So there's skeletal defects, there's cutaneous hyperpigmentation, renal abnormalities, microcephaly, they have small heads, um, mental retardation, and poor growth, and pancytopenia. They are symptomatic within five to 10 years of age. And unfortunately with these patients, they have the tendency to develop leukemias later on, specifically the acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So the treatment for Fanconi's anemia is bone marrow transplant and gene therapy. 
So gene therapy is the hopeful treatment of choice in the future for this, these kinds of patients. Okay, so clinical manifestations of aplastic anemia. So let's start with how it comes up. It is a gradual decrease of erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelets. So this takes time. And then symptoms of progressive fatigue, dyspnea, and palpitations. And there's thrombocytopenia. And so it shows as petechiae, purpura, and mucosal bleeding. So you bleed faster because you don't have platelets. And also there's splenomegaly or the enlargement of your spleen. Okay, so lab findings. So the lab tests include a CBC, complete blood count. And in your complete blood count, you'll have pancytopenia, so low RBC count, low WBC count, and low platelets. And your retic count will be less than 1%. That's the corrected retic count. And for the peripheral, <laughs> for the peripheral blood smear, there is mono normocytic, normochromic RBCs. So they do look normal, but there's not a lot of them as compared to a normal peripheral blood smear because you are anemic at this point. You're not producing a lot of blood. So, But then it's not the peripheral blood smear that diagnoses this. It's actually the bone marrow exam. So in the bone marrow, you will definitely see the difference because um, it's hypocellular it's a dry tap that's what they call it there's nothing in your marrow so it's called dry tap that's a term so remember that um, it's a term for hypocellular bone marrow so for treatment of aplastic anemia so it's actually a poor prognosis if left untreated so if you're less than 50 years of age there's allogenic bone marrow or Peripheral stem cell transplantation. HLA matched sibling is used for this therapy and 65 to 85% survival rate. So that's really, really good. For people who are older, who are greater than 50 years old, or there's a lack of donor, nobody can donate, you know, bone marrow or peripheral stem cells to you. The other choice is immunomodulatory therapy, which involves anti-thymocyte, anti-lymphocyte, globulin, cyclosporin, or cyclophosphamide to try and suppress a presumed attack on the bone marrow stem cells. Did you get that? <laughs> Those words are long. <laughs> Again, so um, other therapy can include anti-thymocyte, anti-lymphocyte, globulin, um, cyclosporin or cyclophosphamide to try and suppress the body from attacking its own bone marrow. And that's it. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you learned something today. And if this video and my content helps you in any way, please do like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and bye.